jewel in the jungle. The Camel Trophy's 10th anniversary lures teams from 14 nations to the Amazon Basin to struggle 1,300 miles through an event that celebrates man's sense of adventure. Bob Ives, I uh, took part in Camel Trophy event many, many years ago and then got into the, doing some off-road stuff for TV, for TV companies, Top Gear Grand Tour, that kind of thing. The, the management of the Camel Trophy, it, it started off with a, um, the Camel Cigarette brand, a German, it was German based in, in Europe at least, um, and they wanted to kind of do something adventurous to like the, like the Marlboro, Man, Marlboro Man image, that kind of thing. And, and uh, six Germans came over to, went over to Brazil hired three jeeps and, and did a um, trip across Brazil, obviously took a load of images and things from it and it, when they went back to Europe it became really, really, um, uh, the, the images really kind of set the adventure spirit off in people and they kind of made it bigger then and, and so the following year they, a lot more people entered and they used Land Rovers for the first time or Range Rovers, um, more countries entered it, wanted to take part in it and then it just grew from there really and becoming this sort of massive adventure um, with up to a million applicants at, 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 um, at some stage and uh, uh, with, we, when we took part in 1989 14 countries entered all, all with Land Rovers, all identical Land Rovers but you had to go through a pretty rigorous selection process to get picked. You, didn't have, you, you couldn't buy your way onto the team, you had, to, you had to sort of go through a selection process and prove you were capable of doing it. But I'd say everybody was of a similar mentality that took part I think because we'd all been through that selection process so it kind of it, it, it took out people that were just kind of losers if you like and uh, and so everybody was it was a positive thinker that went on it yeah, as a competitor you could you could only take part once you could try I, I tried three years running to get onto it onto the team the British team and, and uh, the fourth year running I did get onto the British team and a quirk of fate my brother ended up he was competing as well and got on the team at the same time any any family you kind of you at times you could you know you could hit your brother you could you know you get really fed up with each other at times you you know you love each other but you kind of know you know how far to push things I think with 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 a family member so um and we did work well together we kind of knew our strengths of each other really so it did it work well and uh yeah when I, mean, I did the driving he did the kind of the navigation stuff and all that we had to do uh, calculations of speed time things on some of the comp competitive elements so lift it lift it lift it lift it round it got it yeah. Keep to the left, up over this. Go, just go, 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 go. Up the end, up the end. Go! Well done, Joe. Well done, Mike. We know the way, straight forward, hit the button. Don't cock it up now, we're doing a good time. I was just really really buzzing the fact they got into the team you know I, I never I didn't even think about winning it it was just it was just the fact we made it to get there to, for me I'd read about it for years seen it in the off-road magazines and it was in American magazines where even there wasn't even British teams and I just thought I really want to do this you know I really kind of wanted to be part of that and uh, it, was, it was it was they, they picked a thousand miles of, of adventure was the, was the tagline um, and they do a recce of the of the route in the in the dry season Go back in the wet season then, and everybody had to work together to get through the whole the whole route. You just couldn't, you wouldn't have got through it as a as a single team in a car. Um, so you're kind of rebuilding washed away bridges and winching each other through the mud. So it's kind of it was a real big team effort. There was a few little comp competitive elements along the way, but it was basically just a big kind of adventure that everybody had to kind of work together to get through. So it's... The route covering jungle swamp and the badlands of the Brazilian gold rush offers no refuge for the faint-hearted. The winners of the trophy emerge from 10 special tasks designed to test teamwork, driving skills, and endurance. It was, I mean, we were kind of up to our waist in, in just wet red mud most of the time, really. Yeah, it's kind of like the trench foot, really. It was the old, you know, kind of wet boots just rotting off us and everything. It was just, yeah. The Brits are pretty lazy, really. We had freeze-dried foods. Um, we didn't need to add, we, no, we didn't need to add water for some of those, they're just the, the, the wet foods, but you just need to heat them up, something. And we found on the on the Land Rover engines, you could kind of lift up the, there's a rubber kind of cover, noise insulation cover on top of the engine, you could lift that off and put the put the freeze-dried mills in, in, the, in the kind of, between the manifold, intake manifold and the engine cover, about, you know, about an hour or so in the evening when you, before you knew you were maybe going to stop, put them in there and then just 
like an hour later, hook them out, tear the top off, spoon them out, and eat, eat pretty lazy kind of eating. You know, some of the other countries, the Italians or whatever, you stop at three o'clock in the morning and they're starting to get the pots and pans out and the and the stoves and cook up meals and things, and we just be like sleeping by then. You know? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty short. Sleep was in short supply at times, so you kind of just needed to eat, sleep get up and go again. Yeah. It, w it wasn't fine dining, that's for sure. <laughs> it's like, yeah. What do you mean? Maize? Well, that's a cooking. Yeah, I'm cooking. Cooking that. Cooking would be great. We need a cup of tea. This could just be the, uh, the gringo's teapot. Hey, with filter. Let me check. Spread the curry, right? Is it? The Land Rover that we had out in Brazil was, a, um, at the time, was a newer model of turbo diesel. Um, all kitted out with winches and roll cages and all that kind of stuff and um, got to live in it for two weeks. There's four of us in the car, the two team members and the two journalists with us. So everything in that truck um, is, is our food, clothing, bedding, everything for, for, for two weeks. So it's kind of, it's pretty crowded in there, but we got to kind of love the vehicle. And then luckily enough, a couple of years later, I managed to buy it. So it's nice. We've still got it now. So it's, you know. Uh, but then you can only take part once. So once you've been on it, that's it. You only get one chance. And, and luckily enough, we, we, we worked hard enough. We kind of won it that year. The only Brits ever to do it. We're lying first at the moment with the biggest lead we've had all, all uh, trophy, 10 point lead. Spaniards have managed to lose those. They were, they were equal first with us uh, last night. So we're 10 points clear at the moment. Two more stages to go. So it's quite exciting. If we, if we mess up now, we're, uh, anybody can come, come and take us. So we're, we're fighting for the lead still, yeah. Yeah, when they announced that we won it, I was a bit phased and didn't really, I don't think I took it in for weeks really, the fact that we won it, you know, so, um, and we've got this kind of wooden trophy thing, which is not, you know, it's nothing special, that's all you win, but it's, um, that's cool, but it's just, yeah, it's just, it was an amazing event to be part of, really, really, really lucky to have taken part, and then it died out a little bit when it, when it finished with the cigarette advertising and then the clothing branding and all that stuff in it. Finish. And environmentally as well, it couldn't you couldn't run the same event anymore. It's kind of seems to be revived. People seem to remember it, and, and the images from it are pretty pretty breathtaking, and um, seems to capture people's imagination. Now. Anybody that wants an adventure, um, and the, you know, we have made good friends. We've still the Polish guys, Russian guys that are in the teams, and the American guys here now. We're meeting up with them here, um, which is amazing. And it was a everybody had a similar mentality that took part in it. So it's kind of it's cool that they. Um, that we can still meet up with people. I met somebody today I haven't seen for 20 years, you know, and, and it's just like, it was a great, great memories, and great friendships, really. For me, it's a buzz of getting, doing things in, in, in vehicles that you shouldn't really, maybe not shouldn't be able to do, but just, you, you don't think it's possible, perhaps, or um, just going around Moab the other day, you know, climbing some of those rock steps or going down things, and it's just, um, uh, it's just that buzz, really. I don't, I've been on track days on, on flat tar tracks, and. I just don't really get any buzz out of that at all. You know, you can be drifting a car around a corner, and, and it doesn't. It doesn't. That doesn't really give me a buzz. But taking a car, I don't know, maybe through some soft sand or doing some rock climbing or through some deep mud, and and just um, getting it through and uh, overcoming those sort of obstacles. That just that just gives me a buzz. I don't know who knows why <laughs> why that is, but yeah, that's what it does. So you know, so yeah, some people get a buzz out of football or cricket or whatever or hockey, but I, that doesn't give me a buzz either. But yeah, just taking cars off-road is just does, yeah. Yeah, back in during COVID, uh, got our, it was an ex-Top uh, Gear producers, now producing a show with Will Smith, I think it's called um, uh, Welcome to Planet Earth or something like that, I can't remember what it's called. They called me up and said, would I go to, go to Namibia and um, help train, um, or help just guide Will Smith and, um, and Albert Lynn, uh, uh, explorer guy, just around the sand dunes over there, just using new Defenders Land Rovers over there. Took them around some courses to drive the sand dunes just to show them what could be done when they were on their own filming, really. So it was, it was mainly just the, the, the training session, not the not during the filming. But then we went along during the filming just to kind of help guide them and pull them out of holes when they got stuck and that kind of thing. But we did have one little little accident where we fell into a bit of a bit of a small hole and stopped a bit abruptly. But I'm hitting the gas yeah. and it's not giving it to it's, me. I tell you what, we're going into sport mode. It should okay. get a bit more, yeah. So they, Hey. That caught us out. Oh, hey! That caught us out. That one caught me off. Yeah, that. that caught me off as well. Jeez. Yeah, okay. Okay. We might need to get pulled out of here. Okay. That one caught us both off, yeah. guys. But sir, which uh, I think that it, nobody was hurt. It was all good fun. So yeah. It's the first little step obstacle in front of us. Just a little, little step to climb up. Back to climb up on there, all right? 
Well, I'm, not, I'm having a holiday. Yeah. Dan's working a little harder. <laughs>